Stay tuned for the Joan Quinn Profiles. Joan served the state of California as a member on the Arts Council and on the Film Commission. She was formerly on the Architectural Commission and fulfilled two terms on the Fine Arts Commission for the city of Beverly Hills. As an editor for Andy Warhol's Interview Magazine, Condé Nast Publications, and the Hearst Corporation, Joan covered the world of fashion, the mysteries of food, the excitement of theater, and the international art scene. She continues to find people who are on the cutting edge of their professions. Here's Joan Agajanian Quinn. Hi, I'm Joan Quinn, and welcome back to the Joan Quinn Profiles. We're taping here at the Hollywood Museum on Highland Avenue in Hollywood, and I'm with actor, director, screenwriter, writer, producer, Marek Probosz. And he was born and raised in Poland into a family who loved the arts. He earned a degree in acting at the Polish National Higher School of Film, TV, and Theater, and a certificate in directing from AFI, which is a very prestigious, um, not only institution, but to be invited to, to get that director's certificate. He was granted an MFA by ACEI in Los Angeles, and he's taught at the Warsaw Theater Academy, Emerson College in LA, and at UCLA. You've seen him on TV. He's been in many series in Poland, including Father Matthew, which I thought was pretty cool, right? You play, yes. You play. <laughs> but um, it doesn't stop with Merrick. He goes on and on and on. So tell us how the beginning of your career started. My mom was working in the House of Culture. It was a long time ago, so she was working there, and there was a theater group. And, of course, we wanted to be close to Mama, uh, my older brother and myself, so we were around, and when the play by Christian Andersen was being put together, <laughs> The Princess and the Pea, right. uh, I, got, I got involved and I played the Chester. The, the fairy tale, right? Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. And I have a feeling that my costume of the Chester, somebody who pretends it's stupid, but in reality is quite smart, never abandoned me. This character stayed with me, and that's how I started. The Jester, the Jester, so you, do you still bring that into your acting? I do, I think I do. <laughs> I think that tragic comedy is the best form yeah, of expressing yeah, yeah. yourself. I think that if somebody laughs, if there's laughter, period. Right. Something very close to truth is happening. And that's what you learned early on. That was yes. very interesting, because you were very young when you started. You stayed a long time, but you were very young, right? I couldn't, I couldn't read yet, so I started <laughs> when I was six years old. My mom would teach me lines because I couldn't read. Oh, how great, how but, great. But as we know, acting is not only about lines, right? right? But, but also, it's in your background, isn't it? Your grandparents, your all the way back. My grandfather was a, was a very famous Polish writer, self-taught writer, right? director, actor, and he was um, awarded uh, from the Academy of Polish Literature in 1938, uh, uh, Poets Laureate. Oh, he was a Poet Laureate, right. Yes, and he didn't even have money to go from the mountains to Warsaw to claim it. So the whole village was chipping in eggs and butter and whatever they oh. could to buy him a ticket oh. so he could go and, and get his honor. But the tragic story again is that a year later when Germans crossed the border in the south uh, of Poland, he was one of the first to be arrested, taken to the concentration camp in Germany, in Dachau, and murdered there in 1942. And th this is something that I wanted to ask. It wasn't just the Jews then that were mur murdered. Are you Jewish? No, I'm not Jewish. Uh, you know, Auschwitz itself, till the 41, was almost exclusively for Poles. Only when the What final did they do? Oh, you mean to kill the Poles? Of course. They were arresting intelligentsia, oh, anybody who oh. was a leader of the nation. Or anybody the who was arts. giving Yeah, or anybody who arts. was giving yeah. identity, hope, inspire uh, the nation, uh, right? You know, so that's what they wanted to do. Erase all the intelligentsia, artists, I athletes, see. priests. Oh my gosh. Anybody who was the leader who could lead the rest and then with the rest just treat them as sheep. So you who, didn't really get to know your father? Your grandfather. grandfather. No, your I grandfather. didn't. My, no. my father was 10 years old when they took my oh, they took grandfather. Him. But I know him through his work, through his poetry, yeah. through his prose, you and his 
play, oh yeah, I, I feel s very deep uh, spiritual connection with him. You live here in Los Angeles now because you're teaching at Emerson, at UCLA, you went to AFI, all in the heart of Los Angeles, close to this Hollywood Museum, all around. When did you first come to Los Angeles? 87. Or to the U.S.? To 87. The US? I came straight to Los Angeles. I was in a movie. It was impossible to leave Poland. I wouldn't be able to leave Poland. And I got, I was in a co-production, West German Polish co-production. Uh, uh. And I had some shooting uh, in Hamburg, in Germany. And over there in Hamburg, Gary Essert approached me. I know Gary Essert. So Gary, you came with Filmex? Yeah, yeah, no, not with Filmix, American uh, uh, oh, Cinematheque. Oh, the American Cinematheque, yes, but he was working there. He was the head, he was the artistic <laughs> director, so he approached me and he said, I know your movies because one of my movies won Cannes Film Festival and other San right. Sebastian. <laughs> so he knew my work and he said, listen, I'm making a panel in Hollywood and I don't have anybody from Eastern Europe. Would you agree to come for three weeks? Weren't the Garys great? Oh, they was, brought oh, yeah. such oh, yeah. great yes. cinematic uh, importance to Absolutely. our city. Absolutely. Such a great... So I must have met you because I used to work with Filmex and I knew the American Cinematheque. But you got... You, you're, you're a huge... You were a huge star in Poland. That's why he brought you. A huge star. You were getting uh, awards all over medals and awards. And, and uh, here you came to LA and did you stay? I did. I did because <laughs> at that time nobody knew that the Berlin Wall is going to go down. Uh, nobody foresee that, that the regime is going to collapse. Nobody knew that. As a matter of fact, it was a very grim time in, in history, in, especially in Eastern Bloc. The Eastern Bloc, it was yes, very so tough. There was no it? hope, really. You know, the, the solidarity movement started in, in uh, 80, and it, 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 it was going on and on, and then it was broken, it was suppressed, the martial law came, the leaders were arrested, interrogated, killed. Uh. Uh, it was a grim time. I was working, so I was living in the world of illusion. I was, I was inside the theater, I was on location, I was working in Czechoslovakia, oh, I was working were. in Eastern Germany. Uh. I was doing very well, but I realized that when I came back from the world of illusion to the streets of Warsaw, is that where you were living in Warsaw? Yeah, I was working in Warsaw. I saw blood on the streets. I, I, I heard the news in the Free Europe oh. radio. We all knew what is happening. And yeah. uh, freedom was to me even more important than success. So you stayed here. One of the things you, we talked about, all the medals you got, you did get a medal for this Pilecki. For Pilecki, yeah. Pilecki? Captain Pilecki, Vitor Pilecki. Tell us this story because this is, this is the book the Auschwitz volunteer beyond bravery. And the more I hear about this Captain Pileski, Pileski, Pileski. Pileski, Very good. the more I see what a human being he was, what, how brilliant. And you came in, showed what he did, acted his role, and got these great awards. <laughs> you know, it was such an honor to, to be able to play him, to get to know him, uh, to read his reports, to read his letters, to see his photographs, to hear his paintings. He was also a painter. Uh, he was an amazing human being. And who put this book out? Uh, Terry Tegnesian. At, from Pol um, no, 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 she's... she's uh, Akila? Akila Ak Polonica. This yeah. is her pub publishing house. Akila Polonica, yeah. Yes. I and, and the book is 400 pages. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> so tell us the story of what he did. Why did he volunteer and what did he volunteer? Uh, Witold Pilecki volunteered to go to Auschwitz because he... The whole Polish underground realized that there are many people arrested in Poland and taken to Auschwitz. Nobody knew what was there. So he decided voluntarily to go there and to find out and to send messages to the outside world about what he found there, right? And when he got in, he thought he is in the lunatic asylum because what Germans were doing there was just insane. The brutality was such that... Uh, it was basically everything Pilecki knew or believed in ended right there when he crossed the Arbacht Macht Frei uh, gate to Auschwitz. But is it still at the time when they were assassinating Poles? Of course. Not the Jews. They were assassinating Poles mainly because they invented... That's what I mean yeah. from what you said before, but and not Pol the Jewish cause. 
Uh, so there were some Jews, but mainly it was Poles. Right. It was, it was the, the, the concentration camp for Poles, it. yes. And only in 1942, really, when the final solution was established by Nazis, um. then exclusively Jews were being sent to Auschwitz. But it was Auschwitz. the same place that the, the captain place. was going. I see. It was the oh, same I place, see. and the captain was still there when that was happening as well. And it was already set up. So the Nazis just used it, right? It was they used it and up. they were rebuilding it. It was bec becoming bigger and bigger because they wanted to kill more and more. At the top, to 10,000 people a day were murdered in Auschwitz. Can you imagine? And this film is about the death, it's called The Death of Captain... Pilecki, yes. Yes, it is. It's, you know, it's, it's an amazing story of Vitor Pilecki, not only that, that his heroism is beyond time, religion, race. Right. He was just a humanitarian, and, and, and I always say that, and it's being quoted uh, over and over again, that if you put all 007s together, they won't come up with a story like Witold Pilecki's story. No, it's such a story that you said he volunteered. He volunteered having a beautiful wife, two beautiful children. He left them. Being in the underground, he left them behind because, because he was a man on a mission. And he believed that the atrocities needs to be stopped, that something needs to be done. But nobody else did that. And he did that for three years, two years and oh, seven months he was in three Auschwitz. Years. So, and then he gets out. Then he, not, he escapes, of oh, course, he risking escapes. his life again with two other inmates. It was miraculous that he survived the escape. Uh, and then he went back to the Polish under, uh, underground, trying to convince them to contact London, Britain, oh. and Americans, and, and to liberate Auschwitz, because that's what he wanted to do. And let them know what's going on, right? Well, they already knew what was going but on. But they turned their faces from it. Of course. Nobody did anything. They right. didn't even bombard it, the trucks going to Auschwitz, bringing they people They just let every them go. Nobody wanted to do a thing. Oh, so, so he was trying to convince these different governments to come in and do something. Yes, he was sending information fr first from inside. He even had a radio. That was interesting. And they couldn't find his radio dispatches. They couldn't find his radio. <laughs> and he was sending information about daily routine and what in was Auschwitz, he? about uh, Birkenau, which was the biggest oh, right. killing machine, you know, new one, that they built new factory for killing Jews exclusively in Birkenau. So the world knew about that nothing was done and Pileski decided at that point to escape and once he did he was still trying to pursue the idea of liberating Auschwitz. That never happened so he became a member of the Warsaw Uprising mm -hmm. when Soviets were already coming from the east uh, he was part of the Warsaw Uprising and became a leader of it. And his platoon was the was last one that Germans took over. Then he was again arrested, taken to another camp. After the liberation, he went to Italy, where the Polish oh. free government abroad was established because Stalin oh. took over Poland. Oh. And in Italy, General Anders was shocked that Pilecki is still alive. Pilecki was a legend already. Oh, oh he what, was already? Yes. When he, he got want, to Italy? Yes. He wanted Pilecki to be his right hand in organizi organizing right. Polish free, free government abroad. Pilecki said, no, the war is no, not over. Oh. I need to go back to Poland and fight with Soviets. So he went back to Poland yes, and, and the po Soviets got him. Yes. For two, for two <laughs> right? years, he was, he was having underground again. Oh. Uh, Single-handedly, he was, he was recording on microfilm films scenes and documents and smuggling that information, intelligence, to London. And two years later, he was arrested. He was tortured for a year. Can you Communists imagine? were trying to break his spirit. They couldn't. So finally, they shot him with a single shot to the back of his head. Before that, they did the show trial, saying that he was a traitor and oh, collaborator right, with the West. Right. Till today, his body is not found. Oh, really? No, they burned his body probably right there in the, in the prison of Rakowiecka, because till today, nobody knows where his body is. And you play that character. I played that character, You yes. play the character. You must have had to like draw so much for that film and to take so much from your inside you must, you must become the character. It's not you anymore. There I must be know. a metamorphosis. Oh there must be a gosh. transition. I became him. I was really living like him, talking to him, meditating on him. I met his family, of course. I read everything possible about him. And are they showing the film? They are the film was shown in, actually had a world premiere in Los Angeles, uh -huh. Lemony Sunset 5. Fabulous. In 2006 I was see. the premiere. So they've been... 
playing it ever for since? For 10 years I'm traveling with this movie. For Isn't 10 years now, every single year. Unbelievable. That's there's so, so great. There's such a need for heroes. Thank I'm you, Merrick. I'm the man Merrick. of passion. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for watching the show today. Keep writing to my email, J-A-Q-U-I-N-N-1 at AOL.com. And see you next time.